Hey everybody, welcome to Ryan's Radar. Now we're going to have a look in detail with the 1953 Handyman 210. Bob, how's it going? Very good, thank you. I love you, Woody. You know, I walked up to you and I said, okay, this is very custom. There's a lot that's happened here and you've done it all yourself. Pretty much, yep. Mm -hmm. What have you done? You well, name it. You uh, I took it down to the <laughs> down to the bare frame and built everything new under it. New rear end, new engine, new transmission, four wheel disc brakes, uh, air conditioning, um, power steering. Yeah, just all new glass. Had the seats reupholstered. Made my own door panels inside. Yeah. Made my surf racks. Yeah. You've done a lot of work. I just want to get these up close because you've made the frames for the surfboards yourself, haven't you? I did make this part, yes. So. Wow. And I absolutely love coming to the shows and learning um, new things because I've always seen the woodies throughout the different shows and I always like to zoom in on them and, you know, it draws your attention. Uh -huh. um, but Bob, you were just telling me that post... Um, 51, we're not going to see much of this because then steel was more readily available. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And obviously with the wood, it makes takes more time, more man effort. And yeah, and people didn't want to do the upkeep on the wood. You know, it takes a lot of work to keep the uh, wood looking nice and uh, keep the weather from. What would they to have to do with it when it comes to that? Well, each year they would sand it There's and uh, refinish day. it. Yeah, put new varnish on it. Every year. Well, a lot of guys do. <laughs> yeah. The ones that, that show them that, that can stay inside, you know, they, they're pretty well protected. But out in the weather, they expand and contract, you know, so it's, it's hard to keep that wood nice. But they look nice. They do. They do look yeah, nice. They do. Yeah. You know, one thing I forgot to ask you is, um, why don't we have a look at the engine? In the engine, sure. So is this a 350? Yes. Uh -huh. Why is it? Uh... Uh, wow, very nice. And you've done this yourself as well? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. I like the studs on the firewall. Yeah, I cleared, cleaned that all off and made these plates and uh, made it real plain. Very cool. And what is this? What am I looking at over here? That's the windshield wiper motor. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen it quite like that before. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Now you did it 13 years ago, but how long did the actual full restoration take you? Nine years. Nine years. Nine years. I was yeah. working full time and had a lot of other things going on, so it wasn't like every day, but yes. it took a while. But hey, you finished it. I finished it. Yeah. That's congratulations all on its own. Thank you, yeah. Of course it looks good, but after nine years you stuck to it and yeah. it looks great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Yeah. So is that real wood that you do there? No, it's painted. Yeah. Wow, so, okay, one of the She's things... She's doing it. Just a second. Yeah, I'll be with you. Yeah. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Love what you've done here. Now, you're on Rana's radar, so one of the things that I always like to find out is the Woodies are very unique cars. Mm -hmm. And they've got a great following. What do you like about the Woodies and why do you like the Woodies? Well, it's always been associated with the surf culture and being a surfer, you know, I always wanted to have a Woody, but couldn't really afford a real Woody, so this was the closest thing. I've had this car for such a long time that uh, I wanted to make it look like a Woody. Okay, so you've, you've made it look like a Woody. Yeah. Now, um, you said you did this ten, 13 years ago? That's when I started. It took nine years to uh, finish it, and then um, I've been showing it now for about four years. Yeah. And for someone out there who wants to turn a car into a Woody, yeah. What do they do? <laughs> well, in a nutshell, get a get a one. really good painter because <laughs> this is all painted. <laughs> That's painted. It's not wood. Yeah, it's not wood. No. My goodness, everybody, See, it, it's back here. That's such a great job. I thought this here would have been actually wood. Yeah. No. Uh, that's what. Oh. Hold that's what's fun. Okay. So everything here is painted on to look like wood. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. I love that. It looks so real. It looks <laughs> really real. I just want to show everybody. Uh, thank you. 
The car looks great, but I think I like the back here. Yeah, this is my favorite part is the tailgate. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And are we able to close? Yes. Uh -huh. Bob, you were a surfer. Yes. So that's yeah. where the love for woodies comes from. Yep. And you've got two surfboards on top. Of course. Of course. And I use them. <laughs> you still surf now? Oh yeah. Nice. Yep. And where does a surfer get their car skills? Get the what? Car skills. You've been able to do oh. this all yourself. Well, my dad and I did a lot of work with cars when I was young and uh, learned a lot from him. So we had a good time doing cars. Yeah. A full frame of restoration. Yes. It looks beautiful. Let's go have a look on the inside. Okay. But this is wood. Yeah, that's real wood. Okay. Yeah, I made those. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. From the inside, it looks like an absolute woody with the uh, panels, yeah. the panels that you've done. Yep. Very nice. Now, so here we are at the good guys, and they've got a woody section, which is all around over here. And we're going to see some more tomorrow as well. Mm -hmm. um, is, are you in for any competition? Or not this year? Okay. No. I did win. You can see this back here. That's a trophy I got last year. <laughs> <laughs> San Diego Woodies. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I have never seen a trophy like that. <laughs> I haven't either. Really unique. Yeah. Yeah. Very unique. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. Well, I appreciate this, Bob. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we've been looking at some of the Woodies here at The Good Guys got a whole selection for them and it doesn't get better than this i love it i love the surfboards on top and what's even better is we've got the president of the woody club here so introduce yourself Hi. well first of all i'm actually the vice president but my, my name is phil phil walls i'm here with my 37 for today yeah my friend barry morassi hi there sir hi there i was a president for two years a year ago or so and phil will be the president next year Okay. Woodies are neat. Here we are, Southern California, so it exemplifies Southern California. Southern California surf with the boards and so on. I think in the club we have roughly 200 members. Most have a woody or two or three. This guy over here, for example, has three. So woodies are neat. It's a nice uh, sort of a thematic Southern California thing. Practical, put a lot of people in it, go a lot of places. We have this event, of course, to uh, participate in. But in September, on the fourth Saturday this year, at Moonlight Beach in Encinitas, we'll have another wave crest. Wave crest is the largest gathering of woodies in the world uh, once a year. Wow. And I don't remember, it's our 42nd or 43rd coming up. Wow. So it's a, uh, woodies are a neat thing. They definitely are a no, neat thing. Yeah. Honestly, no, they don't go no, anywhere. They are a neat thing, and I've been learning so much about it. Very good. They're very neat, and I like the history behind it as well on why wood was used before the war. Um, but now the look has just been loved for over such a long time that people still want to get that woody look. Well, it's an iconic surf car, and it's a great Southern California car. Great hobby. Did it and originate here? That's what's that? Did woodies begin here? Is that where they? No, they didn't. Most of the woodies actually came from the East Coast. But they okay. Were, there were woodies everywhere, but, but uh, most well, there's of, beaches most on the did, East Coast too. Most of them didn't survive. <laughs> but in the uh, in the days of the Beach Boys music type thing, that it was a surfer era, that, that they a lot of them had woodies. So, yeah. So it sort of followed that with the, with the culture here. Um, so a lot of these guys have surfboards on their cars and so forth. It's, they do. I do know of the gentleman you mentioned because he told me yesterday. He said. Come tomorrow, I will have all three of my woodies here. Yeah, exactly. And I said, yeah. okay, we will do that. Yeah. But hey, you've got your 37, so let's have a look at that in so detail. Real quickly, he'll be back in a moment, but some not only have wooden bodies, but yeah. have wooden motors. Yeah. Well, I was just looking at that. Yeah. As you guys, that's what drew me. Look at this here, everybody. Now, my first question, sir, is wood over the mountain. 
over the motor. This is Barry's car. Uh, this is his car. And, okay. And the wood grain is obviously just an effect for yes, the wood. Not, not a wood motor. In but I love it because that's what I'm learning that a lot of these are painted. They got a nice wood grain look to it. But it's been done so well that it looks like wood. But it's actually not. No, so this right here is. Oh, yeah. It even feels like wood. <laughs> so, in a general sense, with woodies, these kinds of woodies and Phil's woodies, if you take all the wood off the car, from here back it's only the floorboard. The wood is structural, the doors are all wood, so it truly is a wooden automobile. Wow, this one is truly? Yeah, the doors are just all wood. This is wood, oh wow. So it's not just painted? No, no, it's all... If you take all... the wood off, you have nothing. <laughs> Other than the floorboards. Yeah. Now, a true woody, what do you do to maintain it? Nothing. Every year? Nothing. I think a lot of people would want to know without... Yeah, nothing. Unless you leave it outside all the time. And okay. most of these cars are inside all the time. So you finish it once well. Yeah. And it'll last, yeah, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. Weather is the only thing that will affect the car drastically. And our weather in Southern California is... is best in the world yes and so we don't take them out in the rain because the water will tend to swell the wind and so forth it doesn't hurt it too bad but it's not good the sunshine is the worst thing on them and our cars are all garaged so we bring them out enjoy them and then they go back they go the back into hibernation and yeah, they stay clean you never have to wash them we dust them off and so it's kind of amazing and what about the finish on it the finish is just some sort of uh glossy finish. I don't even remember what this is called. A little bit of a technical finish. I don't remember. It's usually a marine grade with a UV uh, okay. now, but the originals would have been a, like a regular varnish, but now they use a marine grade varnish like you use on a to yacht. Help. So that helps the waterproofing and so forth. And, and how so, long How long have you had yours for? Uh, I like to flip them. I have one in the uh, main building up there. I've had uh, 38 years. This one I've only had 22 years. Wow. Um, but I also want to note in this conversation this one's driven. These things can be driven. I've got 24,000 miles on them. So I'm learning that the Woodies are driver cars. Yeah, can. Some people hide them and put them away yes. and so on. But uh, no, this can be driven. It goes wow. fast. And it goes fast. Yes. What does. motor do you have there? Let's come back this here again. It's called an LS1. Oh, you put an LS1 in it. Okay. Not sure why I said Chevy, because obviously Ford, oh, yeah. being the manufacturer and at the time, bringing yeah. in the wood when there was still shortage. Yeah. It's been a lot of cars today, the good guys. Yeah, All sorts of cars. There are some that are Chevys, but uh, yeah. yeah, these have to be Ford's here. Where because are these from? are the originals. Well, yeah, they're, they were made in various brands, but uh, the ones that survivors were mostly Ford's, because Ford actually produced more of them yeah. in their own factory. Most of the other brands were a more of a custom body yes. that was available in even in high-end cars like yeah. Packers. You know. Because I know a lot of people have yeah. turned their Chevys into Woodies. Yes, there are, and we have a couple of members that have actual Chevy Woodies, and yeah. Plymouth Woodies, and Packard Woodies, and okay. Pontiac Woodies. <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of brands. Uh, Such a unique we, we like them all. We like them all. Well, the other thing, there's an Auburn Woody in the uh, front building. I've never heard of one before. It's a spectacular car. Tell us about that. Uh, it's an Auburn, uh, made in Indiana in the mid-30s. 1936. Uh, yes, and that uh, one, yes. It's a supercharged car. It was a, like a factory hot rod. Auburn was a fast car for a serious driver. Wow. It was a supercharger. They could be driven 100 miles an hour for 1,000 miles without overheating. Uh, that was unusual in those days. Yes. Uh, it wouldn't be uncommon today, but near impossible back then. So it was a car for very serious people. This is an Auburn. It's also a Woody. Uh, it's probably it's probably the nicest car that was here today. Okay. Period out of all the cars. I think it's going to get a nice award of some sort. Uh, certainly deserves it. But it's, uh, it's, an, it's pretty much an unmodified car. It's actually a stock car. And yet it holds its own with the hot rods. Wow. It's from 1936. That's amazing. From 1936. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. I have to go back in there. I mean, I have been noticing there was the 1915 Mercury that got, uh, was an award winner as well, just over here. And um, we've seen the Tri-5 winner with that 56. So yeah, but. Yeah. And I missed that one. I've got to go back so in. that Auburn was just completed. It took a very long time to build it. A lot of machine work in it. But if you do go back in there, I want you to look at the green 42 Ford up near the entrance there. Yep. It 
has the finest original wood in the country. It's 81 years old. It's 81 years Still old. The grain on the, on the car. Okay. Well, I will definitely do that. Has brand new wood, which is beautiful. But that's all. It <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, the, the wood on the Auburn is new and, and is actually custom, but it was done with the authenticity of original character. Because those cars would have had custom bodies on them. That's what I then. thought, yeah. And uh, but, so they've done it in a way that it's actually... It um, maintains that vintage yeah, look, so people yeah. know what it is once they it, see it. It's, it's a historic treasure, and it's awesome. Yeah, so. I have to check yeah. that out. Well, I appreciate yeah. this so much, you guys. Good, well, yeah. that, check Mill 37 yeah. out. Because yeah. Let's it's, walk over there. It's a real yeah. unique car in exceptional good condition and mostly original. Okay, let's walk over there, Bill. <laughs> this, is, this is a 37 Ford that was originally, it came out of northern Wisconsin. It was a girl's summer camp car. You a girl's only, summer camp car? Yeah, you only use for summer camp for the girls. <laughs> did not have a heater, even in northern Wisconsin. Did not have glass windows. Uh, so it was uh, it is preserved. It's only got 51,000 original miles on it now. Wow. It has been completely taken apart, restored, beautified, put back together, modified for safety features and performance. It's got a little more horsepower, overdrive transmission, disc brakes, things like that. It will cruise on the freeway at 70 miles an hour comfortably. Um, and, and this has got the Ford V8 in it. It's it's got it's got a, it's got a V8 in it, but it's got a, it's got an old V8 in it. Too. An old V8. It's got a flathead Ford V8. It's, it's built like a 1950s style hot rod engine with a with a modern five-speed stick shift. Uh, Do they don't make the flathead motors anymore? No, they, they since about I think the last one was probably 1953. I'm guessing at that. <laughs> so when it comes to maintaining motors that are not made anymore, what do people do? Um, well, when you're talking an old Ford, particularly, it's easy because there's so many have been saved over the years, have been so popular, that a lot of the parts have been reproduced that are available. So nearly anything I would need for this car, other than a rare trim piece or something, mechanically, I can buy anything for this car. Okay. Uh, there's either a reproduction that's as good as original or better than original in most cases. Uh, so it's a, it's a very easy car to... To, uh, to have and own and work on. Uh, whereas if you had like the Chevy we mentioned or a Plymouth or something, there are parts that are harder to get because you have to deal with a lot of older mm -hmm. things and maybe leftovers. Uh, uh, with the boards they reproduce so much of it. Uh, wow. And so it's a help. <laughs> oh, I bet, yeah. I bet. Yeah. I love the look of it. I love that there is no windows because it really accentuates the wood even more. Look at this. And are the seats redone? You've restored it? Yes, this car has been done all the way through. This car is usually seen driving down the coast highway along the beaches. Because that's, that's what I use it for as a beach cruiser. And that's why it has no windows. It's just a nice open car. Um, I take it out on, it. on nice sunny days, which is almost every day we live here. Can I open this? Absolutely. <laughs> Even the way the door opens, you know what? Yeah. You'll find they're, they're solid wood, they're solid maple. Wow. Very, very, uh, when, you, when you close the door, you can give it a good slam, it, it's solid, you know. It's a, wow. The quality, the quality of the product is very good. This like car's, the board as well. This car is restored to look exactly like it did when it came out of the factory. This is the original color, original, okay. original wheels, original hubcaps, uh, original interior. Most of the wood on this car is actually the original wood. Really? It's, it's just been refi refinished, refurbished. Refurbished. Brought up like an old piece of furniture, you know? Yep. And, uh, we did have to replace a few pieces of wood. Uh, and you've got leather on the top. And it's a leather, yes, yeah, so it's actually a, like a vinyl top. Okay. But that is the actual original type material. It's a, it's a duplicate original match to the one the car had. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's restored physically and modified for safety and performance. So it, it drives better than it did. But it's, uh, it's, these are fun. Like I say, and I built this to strictly as a driver. As a driver, uh, it's so can, convenient. You can put so many people in it, three rows. Yeah, it's never entered in a contest to try to win prizes. It's had awards, but they weren't expected. <laughs> but, but are never sought for. Uh, this is one I built to drive. It's so okay. fun to get it out and drive it. Because it's uh, what they're for. And how long have you had this for again? I've had this car now for probably almost 20 years. Oh, I'm I love learning about the history behind cars. You all know that. And I'm always learning something new at these shows. 
Now you were telling me, we were talking about what these were actually used for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these, these were, uh, we call them woodies today, but in their day they were called station wagons. Uh, we still use that term today, but a lot of people don't know what station wagon actually meant. A station wagon was a car that you actually took to the train station in that purpose to pick people up, drop people off. So it carried the cargo, it carried a number of people. This was considered an eight passenger automobile, which by today's standards would be a seven passenger automobile. Yep. But it had room for, it took the back seat out, you had room for cargo. So it was for hauling people. This one was used for a girl's summer camp. Uh, but a lot of more estates, the rich people maybe in New York City had a home in the Hamptons, they would have a Woody at their house because they carried cargo and things like that. So they were not, not family sedans or, or typically. Okay. Uh, That's were, why, because I think I asked you, were they used mainly for fun cars or family cars? Because in today's day and age, you see a lot of seats and you yeah. automatically think yeah. it's a family car. Yeah, before World War II, when this was made, the, the highways were small, narrow, windy, slow, you didn't drive fast anywhere, and you didn't drive. Most people didn't go more than 100 miles away from home. No, people didn't take, most people didn't take long road trips, yes. so forth, like we do today. Uh, after World War II, the freeways, well, not freeways, but even highways developed, hotels developed, and, and the economy changed from the Depression to a booming economy in the 50s. So people who are traveling now, and they start buying station wagons. Yes. So if you look, you get a car that's post-war, like a 50, 1950 Ford, that was probably a family car. Yeah. But in 1937, yeah, probably yeah. was not, because this was a depression era yeah. car. Yes. It would be too expensive for the family, yes. so they were bought mainly as commercial vehicles. And mainly as commercial yeah. vehicles. And I know most of you would know the term, but I didn't. And this is the first that I heard where the station wagon term comes from. So I do there was actually that. a term that they used prior to station wagon because if you look at a comparable car back in the 1920, it would have been called a depot pack. Depot car. And a, a depot hack. And that was a, a, a vehicle that went to the depot. When they got more modern, they changed the name to station wagon, which means exactly the same thing. <laughs> Uh, so it's kind of, it's kind of why they're, but it, in, by modern standards, this is what we would now call an SUV. An SUV. Which is a, a utility vehicle. Let's have a look inside the 1937 SUV. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Suicide doors, as they call it. Yeah. Notice the, the roof. That's the roof of the car, because the roof is one of the more beautiful parts of the car. Wow. It has a yacht-like effect to it. Well, this car actually has a wooden top. It's a, it's a top wooden top, top wood as covered, well. It's, it's covered with vinyl for the weather proofing. And is that all wood, the dash too? The dash appears to be wood, but it's actually hand-painted uh, wood grain. And that is, that's been redone, but the, it's the way the original car came. It came with a wood grain painted wood grain dash. You know, the wood grains look really good. They look, they do mimic the wood really well. But when you touch it, you know, they're a little bit more shiny and slimy. Yeah, typically. Yeah, this is the original wood. And this, this, this is mostly original wood on this car. This is solid maple. Very nice. <laughs> I'm really liking the wood. I really am. And the wow factor in this car, for those of you that might know engines, doesn't have the big modern engine. This one has the modified oh, old school modified flathead. Flathead. They call it a flathead engine. This car came with originally with a V8 with 85 horsepower. This car now has 180 horsepower, and it's a, it's just a modified flathead. This is similar to the type of engines they would have built for a hot rod in the in the 50s. They're on the side. Yeah. Wow. That's kind of a neat car. It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> is, that, uh, is that a Cantrell body? No, this is an original body. I, I understand that. Oh, but Henry, Henry had his own factory. He made his own body. Yeah, yeah but they did different ones. Uh, they, yeah. the, the, the side uh, trim, mm -hmm. Cantrell did most of those with the yeah. side trim. Yeah, I, Mine I, was totally different. It didn't have one. Yeah, I think the, I think the ones that came out of the factory are the ones that had the, the Ford factory. Is that right? Yeah. So this came from Iron Mountain then? Yes. Okay. There you go. Because uh, he had his, even not only made the woodies in the factory, he had his own forest to cut his own trees down. 
Yes. That's what he had wood control that way. He didn't yeah. have to rely on the only did I did hear about that. I did know that he had his own Maple Ford Henry Ford. Had birch also right. in the exactly. same stand. That's how Kingsford, the barbecue uh, briquettes came into existence. That's right. He used the scraps of his wood to make briquettes, barbecue briquettes now. But that's where that came from. Come over Henry Ford side. invented that. How big was his forest? Because I did hear that he had a wood, he had a whole, I don't know how big the acreage was. His forest, I don't know how big it was, but it was in, I believe it was in Michigan, upper, upper, upper peninsula of Michigan, I believe, which is factory of course in Michigan as well. Uh, might have been some in Wisconsin too, but up there in that northern area. He had bought the land with the property, and it just was more economical for him to do that. Yep. And Henry was all about providing a good product at a very good price. That's right, mass <laughs> and, production at its yeah, best. Yeah, because he wanted common people in them, and again, this was done during the Depression. People, people were working for very small wages, yes. they were fortunate enough to be working at all. Um, and, uh, so, Buying a new car was a big, big deal for people. Yeah. Uh, for example, the back windows, you could get glass in this car mm -hmm. in the back, but most people didn't get it because it was $15. Wow. That was that uh, was a lot of money yeah, during the Depression. Yeah, two weeks income. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, was, you know, I was about to say that. I thought it was a week's income, and you said two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I think a dollar a day was kind of the standard wow. wage for, for a lot of workers. I love this view here, everybody. It just really gets you to appreciate that roof and the three rows. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more woodies on the channel, everyone. I'm really liking it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I appreciate this. The, uh, I'd like to mention our Woody show. We have, yeah. I think Barry mentioned it, it's in September 23rd this year. Uh, we always, it's usually third Saturday this month, this, this year it's the fourth Saturday of September. Largest Woody show in the world. Fantastic show. Anybody that's watching that likes Woody's or would like to see them, if they could get to Encinitas, California at uh, that, that time. Is it's, there any registration? Uh, you can. You don't even have to register for the show. There's, it's a free show to be in. It's a free show to attend. There's no cost. Okay. So your costs would all be involved in just getting there. Just getting there. Yep. Uh, but uh, all woodies are welcome. If you have a woody and you want to bring it, they're welcome. Uh, we'd love to have them. Uh, we but we typically have at least between 200 to 300 woodies there. Nice. And tell me the name of the place again. It's called Wavecrest. But it's at Moonlight Beach in Encinitas, California. Okay. And uh, it's it's fantastic. I have this car because of that show. There you go. I, I had to have one. <laughs> so it's that good. Awesome. I appreciate this so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.